Welcome once again to the third part in this series, Gospels, Nations, Catalyst. I'm not here to promote any religion, mind you. I'm here to talk about how our nation can get better, how your nation can get better. I know that we're going to be speaking from the Christian perspective, but you see, there are, there are, there are points that I've made for our... our in fact, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be rebuking the Christians in this country or in any country. The number of churches that are so, you know, that are, that, are, that are everywhere in Nigeria, I'm going to be rebuking them, including my own church. So this section, the part three, or the third section, is tied to the role of faith in nation building. And we're going to be engaging in a, on a thoughtful exploration of the pivotal role of faith, especially the Christian faith that's rooted in the gospel, you know, the, 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 the role it plays in the process of nation building. And I want to let, I have to say it categorically that faith has a transformative power that extends beyond the individual, influencing the collective character, ethics, and values of a nation. Friends, let's delve into the profound connection now between faith and nation building. Let's talk about first the influence of faith on individual character and ethics. You know, faith actually is the cornerstone upon which an individual, character, and ethical framework are built. You are ruled by your own values. And that is because you are having faith in your ethical framework. So why I say this because faith actually instills that values or those values such as uh, honesty, integrity, compassion. You know, uh, in, the, in the gospel, the gospel teaches, you know, cause for a life that is marked by love for one another, forgiveness and commitment to the well-being of others. So when you have the gospels as a, a guiding framework for your life, you see that you have values that are rooted in the building of a good nation and your self-force will be changed. So these principles are not going to only impact individuals alone, but the whole potential to shape the character of the entire nation. But it begins first with individuals. That's the first point we're talking about now. No faith influences the character of the individual. So from an individual, it can then move into a family. You know, it's two individuals that come together to form a family. A family is the nucleus of the, the entire society. Individuals make up families. Families make up society. So when an individual is okay, when the life of an individual is standard, it maintains the right values and ethics, you see that the family that it forms will become a power become elevating and then when that those families come together in a nation the nation of course must be strong and built solidly so the point now is that first and your faith should begin with an individual that should not transcend into the nation then this individual we're talking about now when it's not guided not just by saying oh i believe these are my values no the person will have what call authentic faith no, this, this person has begun to exhibit the qualities of uh, like maybe uh, qualities like empathy for others. You know, empathy is putting yourself in another person's shoe. The only person begin to show kindness to somebody. When the person begin to do all this, the person will have a strong moral compass that goes beyond him or her. You know, and all of these virtues they, they don't contribute to the creation of society. Yeah, you have trust, you have mutual respect, you know, and when it's flourish, it will not provide a filter ground for the nation, building up of the nation. That's the first point. The second point to talk about in this part is faith and the shaping of national values and morals. Now, if you agree with me that every nation are defined by their values and their morals, remember that begin with an individual from family. Then to the entire society. So when the entire you know nation are now defined by their values and morals, see faith begins to play a pivotal role. And this faith that I'm proposing, which is the Christian faith, the authentic Christian faith, you know, begins to help the nation generally to formulate their laws and their values. The point is, the principles like justice, the principles like mercy, principles like compassion. You know that are inherent in the gospel are to provide you know a cornerstone for the ethical codes of the nation. And what I'm talking about is let's give a, let's let's just give an example. Uh, for for example, 
Now the call now to care for uh, the, those that are marginalized and those that are vulnerable within the society. You see, it's a, it's a, prom, it's a prominent uh, uh, account or an example of what we find in the Gospels. You know, this part of the Gospel can influence policies and programs that are aimed at the, at the social welfare, you know, or for the social welfare of our nation. Now, a nation that now has these values, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not likely now to begin to say, okay, let's invest into healthcare, let's invest into education, let's invest into the social safety of the people, you know, because they are getting these values from where? From the Christian angle, from the Gospels. So you see that they begin to look out for the marginalized and the vulnerable in the society. Things that will better the lot of the society would be what they will spend their time on and invest in. The next part I want to talk about in this section is biblical references that are supporting faith's role in society. You know, the Bible actually offers so many references that gives uh, or so many references that give emphasis to the, to the importance of faith in the society. Now, the best definition we can give to faith in the Bible is that found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. And it says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You know, this definition actually is speaking of the idea that faith has the power to inspire individuals and the nations to walk towards a better future. Even when the path is unclear, even when the econ- uh, the, 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 there's economic downturn, because there is faith in the hope of the future, where even when it's not clear at the present, you see they will still strive. Another example is in James chapter 2, verse 17. In fact, this emphasizes the active nature of faith, stating that faith without work is dead. So, what this passage of the scripture is saying is that faith should not remain you know, on the passive belief of an individual, of a nation, but should manifest itself in actions, both as at the individual level and at the societal levels. And what does it mean? So, faith is very important. You know, they actually, yeah, this is where so many of the Christians you know, are getting it wrong. If you, if you check the streets, a lane, you will find maybe five, six churches within a street, not up to even a, 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 a mile. You wonder why so many churches in this country, Nigeria, and yet we are not having it better. So many pastors, so many reverend, so many prophets, yet the country is not better. Even when we have them in the presidency, even when we have them at the very high position, you see, they, they take bribery, you see that they take, they, they are corrupt, even, they are even worse than the so-called unbelievers, the normal politicians. Because these people, they have faith, but it is not an authentic faith that has translated from the passive part of their belief to an active part of their belief. So I'm saying that if you are my, a ch- member of my church and you are not, you know, implementing the faith that you have, you are the one killing this country. If you are a pastor, you are stealing. You are the one killing this country. If you are a member, you are not doing well in your own working place. You are the one killing this country or the country where you are living in. So what I'm saying is, is that when the nation now collectively practice the faith that they have, faith, you know, that is, that is seen through an act of charity, giving, faith that is seen through an act of justice, faith that is seen in compassion, you see, it is set the stage for genuine nation building. Friends, to conclude this particular part, you know, so far we have seen that to navigate the intricate relationship between faith and nation building, we have recognized that faith is not a mere personal matter, but a force that shapes the essence of a nation. It holds potentials to inspire citizens, to inspire leaders, and institutions to work together toward creating a nation where the values like love, compassion, and justice are not just preached, but they are practiced. By the grace of God, in our next section, we are examining deeper into how these faith-based values can, be, can translate into tangible actions that contributes to the betterment of the society and the beauty of nations. Please, if you are new,
in this channel. Please do all to hit the subscribe button, to like this video, comment, let me know your thoughts about this session, and then please share the link to all our sundry. And the good Lord will bless you and bless our nation. See you in the next session.